Come back now. It would never have happened to Sir Edmund Hillary, who climbed Everest for the very first time 60 years ago. Time was when local Sherpas were the Western mountaineers' best friend. But times have changed, to the extent that three top European climbers have had to flee for their lives from Mount Everest under assault from dozens of Sherpas hurling rocks and threatening to kill them. So what's it all about? Our Asia correspondent John Sparks has this. The Himalayas, home to the planet's mightiest peaks, host of epic feats of human courage. And last Saturday, the site of a mass brawl between European climbers and Sherpa guides. So nasty, in fact, it's lucky no one lost their lives. Let's start with the visiting mountaineers, superstars in the climbing fraternity. In fact, here's them introducing each other. He's my friend Uli Steck. He's from Switzerland, 36. He's a famous all-around mountaineer. This is Simone Moro. He's a professional climber from Italy. He's a little bit older than me. He's 45. But it looks like Mr. Steck and Mr. Morrow generating some publicity for their expedition. Climbing Everest, not uncommon anymore. Thousands try every year, but these men said they'd do it on their own. No local Sherpas to help. And we will try to, to think something different. We will not have uh, Sherpa fixing rock uh, for us. They were joined by British photographer Jonathan Griffith. He took these pictures, the and, and we'll hear from him later on. On Saturday, while training above Everest Camp 2, the men were asked not to touch ropes, fixed by Sherpas for their paying guests. But an argument began after a collision. Later, punches and stones were thrown during a mass confrontation. Here's Mr Griffith. It rapidly escalated without us really realising into us coming back down to Camp 2 and there being 100 to 150 Sherpas waiting for us. Um, and not really, they weren't really waiting to discuss things. They were sort of waiting for us to come back down to attack us. It was what must be the highest altitude scrap in history. Everest Base Camp is 17,000 feet above sea level. And Camp 2, a breath-quickening 21,500 feet. Just 7,000 feet, in fact, below the summit. Up at Camp 2, you can't run anywhere. You're very high up on the mountain. So you were very much at the mercy of, of the mob that were in front of us. I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't run high up the mountain and we couldn't call the police for help or anything else like that. The men later saved by the intervention of other Western climbers. The dispute is unusual, but it may reflect competition for a precious resource, access to the main route up Everest at the busiest time of year. Maru and Steck may have been approaching the mountain as you know, professional climbers, as we would anywhere else in the Himalaya or in the Alps. But that was slightly naive of them. I mean, it's well known now that the spring season on the South Col Rouge on Everest will be a circus. What Sir Edmund Hillary and his Sherpa co-climber Tenzin Norgay would make of it is anyone's guess. But the mountain, first conquered by them in 1953, has changed. It's still forbidding, but it's far more accessible. Well, I'm joined from Salford now by Alan Hinks, who was the first Briton to climb all 14 of the world's highest peaks. Alan Hinks, the mountain is clearly no place for egos. What do you think went wrong here? Well, it is a right carry-on, and I think the word ego is a good one. I think it does involve a lot of egos, particularly of these two superstars, who are, who are nice guys as well. I've met uh, Uli Steck, and they're both the superstars of the moment, these, uh, these two climbers. So it's ironic it's happened to them, but I think there will be some ego involved here, testosterone, and a lot of misunderstanding, no doubt about it. I mean, they, these two Europeans are, are out to make quite a bit of money and fame from this climb, and the Sherpas are doing their job fixing ropes for the, um, the clients who want will to you... get up Everest. Well, you mention money there. Isn't the fact that money has tainted mountaineering? Because, you know, one of the mountaineers who came under attack said he believes the Sherpas resent what he called luxury adventurers who pay something like £40,000 for a guided climb. And then they expect, he said, tea in their tent provided by the Sherpas. I, I've never come across that, no. I, I mean, I've got a lot of Sherpa friends, and, and I must uh, point out as well that Nepal is one of the surface countries in the world and you don't normally get problems like this. It is a bit of a misunderstanding. And I, I do agree with Cathy, who had on before as well, uh, Cathy O'Dowd, in that it is a bit naive of these two Europeans to, um, if they have, you know, not really, uh, if they have, in, have incited anything, I mean, there's no, uh, I, mean, I mean, you can't condone 
anyone being threatened with murder, but if they've incited anything, I mean, let's face it, they're outnumbered, you know. You could go to areas of Britain if you incited trouble with a couple of guys, then they'd go and get their mates and, and maybe set about you. So uh, I don't think... I don't think Sherpas, uh, you know, begrudge these Westerners that are there. That's their bread and butter, really. Well, you reached the summit of Everest in 1996. Uh, did you ever feel any guilt at the, the Sherpas carrying your kit? Did you ever feel it was a bit sort of them and us? Well, I never really had Sherpas carry my kit, just as these two Europeans don't. Um, you know, I climbed all these mountains myself, but you do use Sherpa help. You have Sherpas in base camp cooking for you. You do sometimes have Sherpa help lower down, and I think it's a bit disingenuous of these two Europeans to say they're not using the Sherpas. I'd be surprised if they haven't used Sherpas to open the icefall for them. I may be wrong, but I bet they've used Sherpas to open the icefall for them. They should have developed a relationship with these Sherpas. I mean, they're great guys. If they'd had a relationship with them and knew the names, they could have chatted over it, they might have had a little argument but that would have been it and let's face it if if anything went wrong and they needed rescuing they would need the help of these Sherpas so it, it is rather peculiar that they haven't developed a relationship with them as perhaps I would and most climbers would I mean the great people these Nepalese guys. Alan Hinks thanks very much for joining us.